Hey there, my name is Promise. Welcome back to more Dune Spice Wars. Not too long ago, I put forth a poll asking you guys what faction you would like to see next on the channel. And by an overwhelming margin, it looks like the Atreides are going to be the winner, which kind of makes some sense. It is one of the most recognizable names from the lore. Though I will say I'm a little surprised that the Frenin didn't get a little bit more votes. <laughs> yeah, sorry, fat fingered that one. My defense, I was typing that out on mobile at the time. Anyway, that's fine though. Let's go ahead and jump into another game for the battle for a and this time we will play as the Atreides. I would consider going for a conquest, but series are always a big commitment and a bit of a risk. Let's just start with the battle for Arrakis first, and we'll see how you guys feel going forward. Now, the Atreides are the exact opposites of the Harkonnen in so many ways. These are the goody two-shoe faction. We cannot pillage any neutral villages, which is actually pretty awful because we can't get some extra money or some experience for our units. However, we can peacefully annex a neutral village instead of attack them if we so desire. Not always desirables takes a lot longer but does come with some nice bonuses we also cannot have any authority loss if we have treaties with other factions so they're more likely to want to trade with me in some way and other factions lose a lot of their standing with the lance rod if they break a truce with us this is important because the treaties are really set up well for a diplomatic victory right we can't go for militaristic i mean we can but we're not going to go for militaristic victories we don't have any major benefits going for a choam victory or a hegemony victory or anything like that, but what we're really good at is persuading the Lance Rod to give us some extra charters and resolutions in our favor. This works well here with the hegemony bonuses you can see where we get some extra Solari production from positive resolutions or we get military power from negative resolutions. So no matter what, we win in some way. We also don't need any prerequisites to gain a charter in the Lance Rod except for the standing itself. And also whenever we have been elected for a positive resolution, we get some permanent resource production bonuses. So the more we play the diplomatic game, the more powerful we will become. Now, as far as our counselors, we have a few decent options here, depending on what you think you're going to be doing. If you want to be going for lots of agents, you could go for Thufir over here, or Gurney could work well for a lot of military units as they get a lot stronger as they gain more experience. However, since you can't pillage, that's not gonna happen as much as you would like. The Lady Jessica is interesting. We can force other factions to accept treaties at the cost of some influence. And again, if they break treaties, they lose a lot of Lance Rod standing, so this could be good for us. And then, of course, there's Duncan Idaho. The more sieges we ally with, the more authority we are going to gain. Could be very useful to us in the early game. Let's begin. And here we go. Of course, we're going to immediately pause the game and look around for our early spice. That's the first thing we need to go for, plus an ornithopter, plus some units. It actually is worth sometimes going for a diversification of troops as the Atreides because we do get some different kinds of bonuses. So, for example, our troopers get extra power for every bonus received from an ally unit. So the rangers give military units attacking the same target extra power. So one of each is actually better than getting two melee troopers. Otherwise, though, the early game is very much the same as what you would see regardless of which faction you are playing. You want to first identify and ca capture your early spice field, then look for anything nearby that could be useful, such as some minerals or maybe some rare elements for some extra solari. We do want to ally with this siege early on, so I'll spend some of my water to get some early plascrete, get this up to 100. And that, if we do get as an ally, would give me uh, actually cheaper warden units. That's a unique unit for the Atreides and could become very, very useful to me. Nice. All right. Well, anyway, let's get up over here and capture this village. Now, we can peacefully annex people. That doesn't mean that we necessarily want to in the early game because it takes a lot longer to do so. Still a lot faster and a lot better to just go ahead and forcefully add them into the fold. And actually, there's some minerals right over here. Perfect. That is a great second expansion for me. All right, we'll capture this using some of my authority, and we will quickly set up a refinery to get the spice flowing. And as far as our research, now that we have a village, we have a few different unique texts for the Atreides that differ from the Harkonnen. Nothing that I would say is so outstanding, it requires a specific build order though. Local community is pretty good, you can go for the extra plastic production and early access to the maintenance centers and the investment offices can be nice. I'm still going to go for the local dialect studies because rapid uh, expansion with authority is still better in my opinion. But we'll follow that up with things like local community, and that could lead to urban planning, which gets me something unique called the Mason Guild in Arakin our capital, and also early access to trade agreements. Oh, and a space cruiser wreck has been found over here. Okay, we could use that to get some extra guild favors, and more guild favors means flying units later on in the game. I can see that being pretty darn useful. 
Let's quickly take that refinery, the harvester, deploy, auto recall, send some extra crew in order to make sure we get that extra spice production. And then once that's set, let's review our stockpile situation, which right now says I can sell most of this and still make a pretty decent profit and have plenty of uh, our stockpile to go around. That said, I don't mind stocking up just a little bit extra, so this should be fine for now. And of course, in our new mineral city, let's get some extra Plascrete production so we can boost that up as aggressively as possible. Okay, we finished the local dialect studies, we finished with the local community. I'm actually gonna go ahead and go for the Atreides sympathizers, because this gets me some extra influence production, and the Atreides faction is fantastic going for the diplomatic victory, as I said, so the extra influence production can be helpful. Not to mention we'll be able to use that for peaceful annexation or forcing people to accept treaties with me. And getting the extra lance rod standing per lance rod information level, once we get some agents up and running, is gonna let us stack up that standing really quickly. We will be able to go for the governance ship title far faster than anyone else will be able to. Our first spy, as usual, is going to go to Arrakis so we can get that extra authority generation. And then once we have that up and running, we're going to go hard on the Lance Rod information level for exactly what I was talking about over here with the sympathizers. For every information level, you get a lot of standing. Really, that's that's going to stack up. If there's anyone who has a really good chance of going for the governorship title, it's the Atreides. Gonna snag a third village over here, since I do see some rare elements. If I could have found some spice, I would have gone for that first, but since I still haven't found any, I want to continue expanding aggressively, and this is gonna be good no matter what we do. Now, native customs can be pretty good for us. Extra authority from agents on Arrakis. We're already doing that, so that's not bad. And if there are sieges nearby, we'll be able to try going for some uh, much cheaper annexations. That's not bad at all for me. Probably will pick that up. I don't think I need to worry about the Mason Guild or the trade agreements quite yet, or the modular parts. Nothing I need right now in the diplomatic or spying maneuvers, and I don't really care about military techs too much. Some of these are okay, but the Atreides are not really intended to be a super military powerhouse. We're good at defense, but really that's about it. By the way, air network can be very good for you. Airfields are really, really cheap, and you can have extremely fast shuttles. This means that you should be able to place these all over the dang map and have a sprawling empire with a military military able to rapidly respond just about everywhere. I mean, really, the Atreides are meant to go for some sort of a peaceful victory type. Most of the time, that's going to end up being hegemony, because hegemony is really, really strong and probably the fastest victory type that you're able to go for in the game at the moment. But yeah, the only thing they're not good at, really, is the domination victories, or I don't even know if assassinations are an option as the Atreides are they. Well, they are. Yeah, so you could do that, I suppose, but you're just set up so well to go for either diplomatic or hegemony. Here we go with Almer. Let's go ahead and get that processing plant, boost up that Solari production even further. Let's go over here and grab myself a free Ornithopter. I like that. And the Lance Rod Council is already prepared for a vote. So we can go for extra authority production. I do like that. Um, going for a Darling of the Minor Houses, if you're going for a little extra standing isn't a bad idea, I'll go ahead and toss a little bit of votes in here just to say I participated a little bit. But what I really care about here is just going to be the authority production. And yes, I'm going to spend all my influence on this. We should be pretty decent at uh, making a lot of influence. And we can spend a lot of that to try and ensure that we can go for these charters. Actually, now that I think about it, we don't even care about the prerequisites, do we? Normally, the Speaker of the Council requires you spent 1,000 influence. But once we get to a certain hegemony vote, I don't think we care. All we care about is the Lance Rod standing itself, which is interesting. Okay, we did find the next spice field available over here, Tabsud, and it looks like House Carino is nearby as well, so that's a small issue. Um, man, I'm gonna have to expand in a lot of different directions over here. I want to go for this aggressively, I really do. I also really want to get things like this siege, though, because uh, going for the extra... Well, I guess we don't care that much about the Warden right now. Not a big deal, but I do want to take this over. It's a good territory. Looks like we do have a trade agreement offer from House of Cause. They are willing to do a non-aggression pact. Talk honestly. Yeah, I guess I'm actually okay with this. And now that we've reached two and a half thousand hegemony, we can go to our main base and start working on some of these upgraded buildings, if I can get myself a bit more Plascrete. The administrative hall would not be terrible for us. A research center also would not be bad. Going for faster hegemony just means it's easier to go for that victory condition. I think I will go ahead and get started on the research center, and we'll place this in one of the one slots down over here, which is going to get me much faster statecraft development, and probably reserve this three slot over here for the maximum influence and intel. The max influence means I'll be able to try and pocket more votes for crucial uh, elections in the Lance Rod. We also did win our Imperial Propaganda, so that's an extra 30% authority generation for me. Beautiful. 
We're gonna go ahead and move immediately into this next village since I do have a bunch of lance rod guards. That means I've got a nice military powerhouse. Did lose a unit, unfortunately, due to the attrition in the area. Which goes to show I have way too little water right now, but that's gonna have to temporarily be okay. I'm working toward those filtration systems. There's that village. I immediately want to get myself a refinery. Never mind, don't have enough plascrete. Gosh dang it. That's fine, we'll get there soon. Oh, and there is some more spice over here. Good to know. That actually means in this territory, I want to build a silo, spice silo, boost myself up over here, take this territory, boost this one up over here. This actually would have been even better for me than the one I just grabbed. Nonetheless, that's fine. We know where we're gonna go next. All right, so at least we have the filtration systems. I can start getting some water. That solves a lot of problems. What else do we wanna do here? Um, I guess we could go for the mill survival training. I don't think I need to. Cultural assimilation, much cheaper peaceful annexations actually would mean that in the long run, it's better to peacefully annex some villages instead of attack them because you get a discount. That could be nice. Hmm, okay, or valuable trinkets, blah, 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 lay of the lands. More knowledge could be kind of nice for me. Um, yeah, I think it's kind of questionable what I want to go for here. I'm going to go for the agent recruitment speed because I do think having the extra intel so I can start building up things with the lance rod is going to be good. But then maybe I go for things like cultural assimilation. We've now reached 5,000 hegemony, which means we should have unlocked some of our bonuses. So this is where we get the extra production or power depending on how the resolutions go in the lance rod. Speaking of which, let's send our next uh, agent over here to the Lance Rod, start getting that extra influence and build up that information level. And of course, we need our third refinery. So I'm gonna have three spice fields fairly early on. That is not bad. What I'm actually suffering for right now is Plascrete. I wonder if it would be worth trying to get some, uh, let's say, trade deals with other folks, people who don't care about their Plascrete, How can I so I can get it a little bit cheaper. Like House Carino, hi. I have extra spice, would you like some of that? The answer is yes, perfect. And this is of course where the Lady Jessica would be able to force some treaties if we so desired. Not worried about that quite yet though, let's just take the Plascrete and run. There's cultural assimilation. Okay, so peaceful annexation just became an actually attractive option. So we could do that over here for example, it only cost me 60 authority instead of 74. It's gonna take 10 days, that's the big downside is it does take a while to do this. Still, I'm gonna go ahead and say it's worth it. New council is on the way. Um, somebody's gonna suffer exchange rates with their spice, faster statecraft, faster military development. So depending on what we want, this could be good for us. I think we wanna go for a lot of statecraft if we can. Um, unfortunately, we still don't have quite enough lance rod standing to start asking for any of these charters, but we're very, very close. This next one should actually be all we need thanks to the Atreides sympathizers, I would think. Let's see, I can go for another one of these bonuses. Do I want to go for the economy here? Yeah, I think we're gonna go ahead and pick up that authority production and go for a cheaper tech rush. It's got those spice silos I was talking about up and are running. That's gonna be a 20% spice bonus in both of these areas. And since we do have the proper tech, we should also be tossing additional crews onto these harvesters. And now we've peacefully annexed this village. Perfect, all right, and that means if I can get myself one more agent, we can go ahead and pick these guys up. Not that I need it very badly, but it's an option for us now. That's good. Also, I'm pretty sure you have to have a minimum number of sieges that are allied to people in order to go for the governorship. I could be wrong on that, but I thought that I read once upon a time that was the case. Then again, this game did go through quite a few updates during its early access phase, so Let's I might actually just straight out be wrong. That seems like really expensive for a little influence. Pass. Ooh, people are ganging up on me. Okay, a lot of folks, namely the smugglers, decided to toss a lot of votes to try and screw me over and destroy my uh, spice rate, and they did a very good job of that. Oh, that's actually gonna hurt economically, like a lot. Well, since we at least do have the bonus to statecraft development, let's go ahead and try to work down some of these as fast as we can. Sustainable spying. Extra resources for information level in the different groups. We can go for small council. Uh, if we have lots of counterintelligence, we get some bonuses. Could be nice. I'm gonna go for this though. The minor houses are gonna deliver a gift to me after every council. I could see that being useful. Ooh, I don't like this. House of Cause is making a play for the polar sink immediately, which allows for a really good water extraction unit. Ooh, wow. All right, bold play by them. Let's go ahead and move toward the Lance Rod support. Makes the most sense. Is there anything else that would boost me toward a diplomatic victory? Not really, just shy of like getting as much influence as possible. 
Might be worth then going for things like, let's say, the air networks, since I'm starting to build those up. And then we could go for a lot of really, really strong militia, just to encourage the AI to leave me alone, because now's about the time when they might start attacking people. Now, here's something I want. The Water Cellars Union. For every extra water we've got, we can get some extra Solari. I can see that being fantastic. I should toss a lot into that. House Carino does have a reasonable amount of influence, though. They could theoretically beat me on this. Whoa, sandworm detected. We need to move, we need to move, we need to move. Get over here to the rocks, get over here. Ah, no! I had, like, almost no time to react to that. Dang it! You big jerk of a worm. Uh, we should we should exterminate those darn things. Why has no one thought of this? Have we thought about just doing like a mass extinction event for the freaking worms? We got future tech. We should be able to figure it out. Oh, dang it. No, 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 no. I was peacefully annexing this village and it looks like the um, smugglers have decided to attack it. That's unacceptable to me um, because I invested a lot, and I mean a lot, of my uh, authority into that. So if we can find a way to get in there and fight them off, I'll do it, but I'm not sure we can do it fast enough. That's right. Okay, the smugglers actually did die. Well, that's very lucky for me. All right, never mind. Retreat, get back to the rocks before the worms can get you. Let's see, back on Arakeen. Let's go ahead and get some extra plascrete production going since that's been one of my big economic bottlenecks so far. And actually, I'm gonna go ahead and build out a spacing guild branch out over here, because I've got enough of this guild favor. We could start getting some good flying units. If we're gonna do that, I should go ahead and peacefully annex this village here. I haven't got any power cells yet, and we could really benefit from those. The smugglers were attempting to attack me over here. I think they just got very confused. Now they're attacking me directly. Haha, <laughs> they thought they were taking on a neutral village, wasted all their supply, and now they're attacking my actual militia, and they still got no supply, so we should be able to just kill a bunch of these fools. <laughs> I feel no pity for you at all. Let's get our fourth refinery. Now, since we're making a lot of money, I want to go ahead and get myself some of these wardens. It does cost a fair bit of manpower. Usually would have really nasty upkeep and takes a lot of command points, but since we have a slight cost reduction on that, let's get two of those. Do we want to become the eye of the council? Probably wouldn't mind. It's not that I think I care too much about probes and stuff, but extra agents and stuff, I don't know. Could be useful. Eh, we'll give it a go. Oh, and House Carino has decided to attack me over here. They're going for the spice. Well, that sucks. Um, we'll be able to defend that, though, because we're about to get ourselves another airfield set up over here. If this can just finish in a little bit, we can transport all our troops and move really fast, and then we can go ahead and punish them. Or I could go ahead and use my wife's ability to we force a treaty on these guys and say, Back the frick off! That said, I'm kind of a big fan of just telling people to die. So let's go ahead and use the shuttles. And yes, I see a raid coming over here as well. I think this is a more urgent threat, but once dealt with, it's fine. Oh, you're trying to liberate this village. They're happy to be here. What are you talking about? All right, time for an ambush. <laughs> oh, gosh, please do not kill my rangers. I'd really rather not lose all these units. No, don't die. All right, he's alive. Perfect. Let's go ahead and plan out a supply drop over here just to make sure I don't lose any units. House Carino decided to move in over here as well. We'll just chase him away for good measure. Make sure everyone's supplied. And hi, House of Cause. I broke my non-aggression pact with you. Did you hear? Now die. What do I want to get over here, by the way? The Kraken would be awesome. I need 100 guild favor to make that one work, though. We could go for some Hawks if I want to get some smaller units. That said, if I hold out, the Kraken is actually a really good flying fortress. I could really make use of that. All right, so we're crushing House of Cause over here. They've got absolutely no way to stop me right now. My military power is significantly stronger. Oh, they want to trade with me. No, go away. Not doing that, no. And I did not get Eye of the Council, by the way. Looks like they uh, rejected that one. That's unfortunate. There we go. Say goodbye to all of your units. That's going to be pretty crippling for them. And I also get some extra Solari for every unit that I killed. <laughs> I love bounties. Now, unfortunately, I can't take this village right now. We're still a bit behind in authority, but I can peacefully annex it for a lot cheaper once it's out of here. So let's liberate. Just deny them the resources for now. And actually, I don't even see a reason not to just go ahead and attack this next village as well. The more we can hurt them, the better. Yes. Oop, storm coming in. Run away, you stupid ornithopter! Don't fly in the sand! Don't you know how scary that is? And Carino just set up their next base right next to me. That's rude. So, peaceful annexation? Let's go for it. Fun fact, by the way, normally it's really, really difficult to take over a uh, town that's just been freed. But if it's peaceful, no one minds. It's fine. Ah, crap. But here comes a lot of smugglers. Good lord! Why are there so many smugglers? Fantastic question. Alright, let's, uh, let's move, shall we? 
Oh god, and here comes House Carino as well. Let me just liberate this. Thank you. I'll leave now. Leave me alone, House Carino. I'm not in the mood to deal with you right now. Bye bye. All right. Time to take the fight to the smugglers and make them pay for this one. Um, we could use a leave order and try to make them lose a ton of money if they stick around, but honestly, I, I think we can just go ahead and kill them. Wow, my wardens are getting obliterated, though. That's a lot of nasty units. They do have a lot of firepower. I'll give them that. All right. You know something? I'm starting to regret this. We're losing our entire military instead. Oh, good lord, they had a lot. They had so many units. Tell you what, <clears throat> um, I would like to have a non-aggression pact with you, and you will say yes. Bye. Actually, I'm not sure why they're not leaving. We have a non-aggression pact, don't we? No, for some reason they were able to reject that. Truce, they immediately broke it. Oh, that's why. <laughs> so all we did was just basically use some influence to force these guys to lose a lot of standing in the lance rod. All right, interesting choice on your end. I can get this back, you know. It's not really a huge deal. It's just annoying. It's fine. You already pulled a lot of your units back. Let's just go ahead and use our shuttles, and we'll just drop some wardens on your head. And as long as we get in there and start shredding your uh, range units, I don't think you'll be able to take me down nearly as fast. These snipers are what got me, I'm pretty sure. Oh, gosh dang it, House Carino, no! Now is not the time, Kato! Freaking heck. All right, we're going to drop them right on top of all their riflemen. Again, with the intention of trying to hit their range units so they do half damage. The fact that I have really fast-moving shuttles is literally a lifesaver right now. Okay, I now hold the center of the map. Um, always kind of a dangerous position to be in, if I'm completely honest. I will place down another airfield over here, just so I can move around really quickly. Did I once again get denied another one of these rolls? Everyone is tossing every vote they've got just to prevent me from going for anything diplomatic. This is why the hegemony victory often ends up being the much faster option. Because, like, unless there's a better way of controlling all of the minor houses and their votes, the other players will just block you from literally everything. Oh, guess who's back? More smugglers. Yay, here we go again. So let's take a look at that water extractor. 300 plastula is what I need. 20 extra water. Gosh. I mean, that stuff pairs up really well with this whole water seller's union. I'm actually generating enough authority that I'm peacefully annexing two villages over here. One way down over here so I can get even more of these energy sources so I can get some really big buildings or ships. And then another one down over here so I can get the Imperial Basin for some extra hegemony. And we need to keep getting more of this uh, guild favor, by the way. I really want the Kraken. Once we have that, I'll actually feel like I can go ahead and start attacking people with impunity. Speaking of attacking with impunity, let's go ahead and start doing some more damage to House of Cause. I didn't want to rob them of some of their spice. It is dangerously close to their main base, though. Admittedly, that is a small issue. Um, any chance we can just kind of get slightly out of range and still try to liberate this? Is this an option? Ah, oh, but I'll lose a load of standing. That sucks. All right, different thought. Um, how quickly could we burn down your refinery right here? Pretty quick, I'm guessing. There you go. It's not quite as good, but I mean, it definitely hurts them a little bit because say goodbye to their spice production. Gosh dang it, guess who's freaking back again? It's the dang smugglers! Every time! That's it. I'm using a leave order. If you stay, you're going to lose a load of money. I don't even know how they're doing this. They don't have a lot. They've only got like a couple of villages. And one of them is actually being raided right now. Why are you wasting your time trying to take me on? So the smugglers are trying to make another big push somewhere, and I did manage to snag this away. I wasn't able to get there in time with enough units. Oh god, no, no sandworms. Frick me. Run, 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 Jesus. I mean, I guess I shouldn't be surprised. We kind of did make a lot of noise. That's it. No more Mr. Nice Guy. I'm gonna go ahead and start attacking these smugglers and weakening them. I'm sick of them. House Akaz got the Eye of the Council vote. See, what I want to know is how you're supposed to control the minor houses. That's kind of the big thing here. If you want to go for the governorship, you've got to get their votes. But how exactly do you do that? It's not just a matter of standing, I'm pretty sure. I mean, granted, a cause does technically have a little bit more standing than I do, which is surprising, but there you go. Let's go ahead and build up that Kraken. Now's the time. I've been saving fuel cells specifically for that thing. Hegemony, by the way, coming along. I'm uh, not quite ready for a victory, but we're getting close. It'll help if we start making some of these craft workshops so that we can start generating more hegemony passively in addition to all the conquests we're doing. Let's go ahead and start peacefully annexing this area. So between the White Rift, the Polar Sink, and this Imperial Basin, that'll be three strong hegemony regions where I can build more of these workshops. And while Carino and Akaz are brawling it out, since their bases are actually really close to each other, um, let's just go ahead and rob Carino of one of their villages. 
And for the record, there's my Kraken. All right, the troop carrier. Release carried units below the sh uh, ship. So I should be able to actually pick up a bunch of folks and then just drop them all off. Wow, that's a great way to avoid the sandworms. How's Carino? I'm sick of you. Um, I'm gonna demand that you uh, leave me a bone. There we go. All right, so we've got a forced treaty with them. Then it's a question of, do I want to go and harass, harass House a cause and weaken them a little bit since they're my only real rival for hegemony? Or do we want to continue fighting against the smugglers for the heck of it, who are trying to rebuild their empire down here? And actually, what do you know? They're sending more troops over here. Gosh, dang these smugglers! Yeah, screw it. Let's just go ahead and attack House of Cause and start systematically dismantling them. I don't want them having any of these resources, dang it. Oh, Dune Governorship. This is the one I'm shooting for. 660 votes. No one else can stop me. I almost have enough to override their combined votes and the minor houses as well. If I can just have some of the minor houses, we actually have a chance of getting this. Wait, I just realized something. No, 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 no. Don't vote for House Carino. If I did that, I'd be literally handing them the game. Ha, 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 ha. No. Um, instead, we are, uh, we are gonna do this. Yes. Good lord, that was almost a complete and total disaster. Can you imagine if I had literally just thrown the game away like that? That would have been hilarious. The irony is I really think I could have gotten the governorship if I had still been able to hold on to this whole water seller's union thing. House Carino really screwed me over on that one because the dang minor houses again. All right, screw it. I'm gonna go ahead and try to assassinate the smugglers. I'm sick of them. No more Mr. Nice Guy. I didn't wanna be the nice guy in the first place. You know what, since we're really close to the end anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and be bold. I'm gonna try to take out this Imperial base. So let's sabotage them, make sure we have plenty of supply to work with. I need you guys to go ahead and take out their Hawk thing first. Assassin on their way down over here where I have an infiltration cell. Um, looking for the safest path to sneak through here like this. So we can launch the assassination mission, let's say right here. There we go, so that's now in progress too. Oh, of course he had a couple of assassins in the waiting and just took out some of my units for fun. Oh, good, 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 fun, fair, yes. Oh God, reinforcements incoming. Run away, Never mind. no longer worth it, run away. Gosh, dang. I mean, if I'm completely honest, none of it matters, all right? We're about to win the game uh, because I am less than a thousand hegemony away from winning the game and I'm about to annex another region. So we're fine, but Gosh, dang, yeah, they are not kidding about, do not bother going for a militaristic victory as the Atreides. It just doesn't work out very well. I'm also really highly annoyed that you guys keep chasing after units into enemy territory. Yeah, here comes the victory right about now. That's 30,000 and we win. The hegemony victory once again. Good lord. Ooh, and that's with Max Lancerod standing. We simply could not, despite the fact that I had obscenely more influence than everyone else, I could not seem to get any position to stay on the council. I either misunderstanding how that works or it's really difficult to do because once other players start ganging up on you to make sure you don't win, it's hard to overcome them. It really, really is. Nonetheless, though, we were able to use the Atreides' power pretty effectively to go ahead and just conquer huge amounts of land, way more than the AI. So our victory was all but assured at that point. No one was even close in the hegemony victory. Not exactly my favorite um, faction, mainly because I just don't feel like I can be aggressive enough. But we were able to stay ahead of the AI pretty effectively throughout almost the entirety of the game. The weird exception being, apparently, the Solari production of the Smugglers was outstanding. Yeah, territory you can see not even remotely close on that one. Carino played the political game. It worked out pretty well for them. And everyone else is actually fairly even on military stuff, but I'm pretty sure I still could have won a lot of that. Still, that's another battle for Arrakis complete, and the Atreides do get to take the planets the rightful way. Now, hopefully, we do not get any knives in the dark from the Harkonnen. Thank you all very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If so, I'd ask you to hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe, make sure you hit that notify bell, and I will see you guys next time.